All right, in this video, I'm going to take these top scores that are being generated on my server, and I'm going to send them to that UI element, display their face of the, of the top all 10 or all three, I'm just going to do three because it takes a long time, scores for my game. So if you have not been following along in the videos, that's okay. These are the videos. I'll put that link in the description if you want to start from scratch. If you don't, I'll put this link in the description. And then you can hit this edit, these three dots, hit edit, and you're going to get that world right there, right? And it's got this just kind of a blank frame. I even called it frame. I didn't decorate anything. So it's got a frame. It's got a button. And we're going to talk to that leaderboard that's got the data in it. So if we open it up. Here is our leaderboard, right? So we have a data store service, which reminds me, if you copied that game from those three dots and you didn't do the videos, let's make sure game settings, security, ooh, look at that, I didn't do it either because I did exactly what I was telling you to do. Enable studio access to API services, hit save. Now you're gonna have your access to the data store. Let's go back to that. That gets me so many times, all right? So now we can get our data store stuff. All right, I have max places at three. Let's go ahead and make a remote event so that we can send our data that we're getting from the data store to the client, say local. Uh, replicated storage, that's where we're gonna put our remote event. Game get service, replicated storage. So replicated storage is right here. Replicated storage is a great place to put remote events because the client can see it and the server can see it. And the remote event is the doorway between the two, right? So I hit that plus sign, I hit a remote event, and I'm gonna call this top scores RE. Oops, I made it RD. Make it RE for remote event so that you don't forget. Anyway, there we go. All right, let's get a reference to that remote event. We have replicated storage. Let's call that top scores RE. I made that lowercase just to distinguish the two. Uh, replicated storage, wait for child, and there it is. It's in my Intelli IntelliSense. Cool. Now we can send data to our UI. Let's grab that, right? This is where we're printing it out down here, this get top 10. I think I'm going to put my update when people update the rank, like when somebody gets a new spot, I'm gonna send that to the UI. So I'm gonna to say top 10 scores RE. I'll do a fire all clients. There it is, fire all clients. And then this is the data that we wanna send right here. Top 10 data. Right after we save it to the data store. Boom, there we go cool beans. Where else? And when somebody enters the game, right? Somebody enters the game. Let's go down here. We could do it at, at here. I'm going to do it here. Player added, right? So we have a player object. I think I'm just going to send it to fire client, just the guy who's entering the game, right? And then we don't have a reference to that, but we can get top 10 data and you do want these two brackets in here because we're sending the return value. We're not actually calling that like a function, like a parameter. We're gonna send the return value. Cool beans, we're set. We're sending data to our UI element. So let's go over to our, our uh, frame. It's on our screen GUI. Maybe make this a little bit bigger. I'm not gonna to decorate too much. I'm assuming you guys can decorate better than me. All right, so we got our frame. Let's go ahead and put a text label at the top, right? And I'll just stretch that out over the top of this. We'll say size. I'll make this one for the scale on the X, zero pixel offset. And then we'll do maybe 0.25. Do we want, we want four rows? That's good. That's for the Y. So 25% of the Y. Oops, that's on my frame. Control Z. Go to text label, and then let's redo that size. Uh, one, zero, 0.25 and zero. There we go. Cool, let's call that title. And like I said, I'm not gonna do a lot of decorating. I'll just make that bangers. Text, I'm gonna make this top scores. 
with an exclamation mark because it's exciting. And maybe I'll just do text scaled like that. Cool. All right, so let's do some frames underneath. And I'm going to go and put this UI, whoops, UI list layout. Now, the UI list layout is cool because if I add more components, it's going to add it in a list form. So if I go to my main frame here and I add another frame, boom, it's going to go right underneath. Let's go ahead and make that frame. Let's call that first, right? That's going to be our first place guy. Uh, we do have to change the size. So we'll make it 100% on the X, zero pixel offset. 100% is a one actually. And then I'll make it 0.25 on the Y, which is 25% and zero pixel offset. Boom, it goes right across. Cool. And then let's put some stuff in here and I want that to line up. So I'm also going to do another UI list layout. This one here, I'm gonna make the fill direction horizontal. Cool. And then I'll put text label that text label is going to be place right my position my uh my first second or third size i think i'll make that 0.1 on the x which is 10 percent of the parent object which is the frame zero pixel offset 100 percent of the y because i want it to be the height of the frame zero pixel offset so there we go so that's the 100 percent of the y 10 percent on the x Let's just go ahead and change that to bangers. And then maybe I'll, let's call this nothing. Well, let's leave it there so we can see what it looks like. We could do text scaled and then just worry about the text size for cleanup. And I'm not gonna change any of the, uh, I'm not gonna change any of the colors. So that's cool. Let's go ahead and add another element to our first frame. Let's call, uh, let's get an image label for our face icon let's call that image label icon cool and what do i make the icon uh, let's make it like 0.2 we don't want to stretch things out much you're going to have to play with these sizes to get what you want so for size on that i'm going to do 0 0.2 which is 20 percent on the x a zero pixel offset one, which is 100% of the Y, zero pixel offset. Cool, that's pretty squarish, right? And then let's let's actually make it this a circle. We want to go here and do a UI corner. And then you're not going to see that until there's an image on there. Corner radius, I'm going to make that 0.5 and zero. That's going to, oh, you can see it. You can see it there. Good. That makes it like a, um, flattens out all the corners there. Cool. All right, let's add something else. Let's add a name label. There we go. UIs are kind of tedious, right? So we'll say name. What am I going to make that size? Uh, point three, maybe. Uh, uh, let's make a point, point four and zero. And then one and zero for the Y. Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. Go ahead and make that bangers, boom. And then we'll make the text label, we'll just scale it again. See, the, the texts are gonna be all different sizes. So you might wanna like think of some size, like maybe 20, and then just call it, call it that. That's on the name, right? That's pretty big. Oh, you have to unclick, you have to unclick the scaled. So maybe make it 25. That's good. Maybe make place 25, unscale, uh, unclick scale. Ooh, that's big. There we go, 20. All right, and then what I'm gonna do for label is I'm just gonna duplicate it, control D, boom. And that way I just have to change the name here. I'll call this score. And then for the size, let's make that 0.3 so it's not hanging out. 0.3 on the X, cool. All right, so we have our basic structure. We don't want these. I just left them here so I could see what I was working with. I'll hit score. Let's get rid of the text because we're going we're gonna to autofill that with code. Boom. Boom. Oops, control Z. I accidentally deleted it. And is that name? 
let's switch score and name. So what I'm going to do is this is tricky with a UI element. I'm going to drag it up to the frame here, and then I'm going to take score and I'm going to drag it back into the first, and it's going to plop it down here. I must have I must have messed up when I was doing that just now. All right, there we go. But that's how you fix that. It's really hard to reorder the UI element. So I just pull it out and then put it back in. Where's my text? I got, I got distracted. There we go, text. Get rid of that, boom. Cool, let's duplicate our first, Control D, whoops, undo, Control Z, click first, Control D. There we go, let's make that second. Cool. Let's duplicate second, control D. That's the second frame. We'll make that third. All right, looking good. All right, now let's go ahead and go to the frame and then add a local script and get that data, All right? So we're gonna say update scores. This isn't gonna be that bad. UI elements, this is a long video just because UI elements take a long time. Uh, I want to get my replicated storage, just like I did on the server side, replicated storage, because that's where our remote event lives. I'm going to call this top scores RE. It doesn't have to be the same as we did on the server. This part does, though. Replicated storage, wait for child. There it is, top scores RE. Cool, make sure it's spelled the same. Uh, I'm going to get a reference to the main frame. I just call it frame. We'll call this mainframe for the for the variable. And then it's script.parent, right? Because there's the script, that's the parent. Cool. And I think I'm gonna make a array of frame names, right? And that is my first, and then second, and third. Make sure I spell those right. They have to be spelled the same as these frames right here, the first, second, and third. We're gonna get references to those with code. So I'm gonna make a frames table, frames table. That's, that's for the frames themselves. These are just the frame names, but these are the frames, the first, second, and third. I'm going to make a loop to populate those frames using the number of frames and frame names that's what that pound sign is in steps of one do table insert this is the table we're going to insert into we'll say mainframe whoops mainframe wait for child and then we're going to get our frame names we're going to index that frame names with this I counter, right? Control Z, this I counter. So it's gonna go one, two, three, and we're gonna say first, second, third, and then we're gonna get the name of our frame that's on the main frame. Boom, we're gonna put it in that table. So it just auto-populated with some code. All right, and now we need another function called update scores, right? And we're gonna get the data in from the server. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to get our top scores RE, the remote event, and we're going to look for the on-client event that we're sending from our fire all clients or fire clients on the server side. And then we're going to say, hey, when you get that event, connect, update scores. Here we're actually going to remove these two parentheses because we're not using the return value. We're actually saying, hey, um, use this and then call it, right? So it's a difference between the parameter, um, using the function as the parameter and using the return value as the parameter, which I know is confusing. All right, so in update scores, let's look to see if we have data, right? We need data, if there's data, and we need our frames populated. And frames might be slow to populate when somebody's joining the game, so we've got to check for them. Then let's go ahead and get the minimum number between our data that we collected, this is gonna be the number of data elements in the array, and the number of frames. Because the server guy may have stored top 10 scores, we just made three. 
we're not really sure, I'm sure, because I did both, but in a real game, you might have one person working on the server, one person working on the client, you should do a check, just so that you don't get an array index out of bounds error. So I'm gonna do four i equals one to min, whatever that min number was, in steps of one. We'll say frames, what do I call it, frames, frames i, I'll do a wait for child just to make sure it's ready. We have our place, right? We call that place. Yep, that one right there. It's going to be under our first, second, and third. We're going to get the text. And then we're just going to update with this i value because i is going to be like one, two, three, four, like that. Cool. And then let's go ahead and just copy this. Control C paste it we have a name right and the name is going to be in the data right? so we have a data element i and then we have a name field in there if you don't remember what the data looks like actually i did not really go over it our data looks like this right so when we insert into our top 10 i'm only doing three we have an id which is the player id we have a name and we have a kills all right, so I made a table of data that I sent over in that fire all clients. All right, so when we got there, so that's that name. And then we would need one for the kills too, right? So let's go ahead and copy this, control C, boom. And here we call that score. Let's change this to score. And then here we call it kills. All right, we got to remember which one we called which. All right, now we need our face, right? How do we get the face? Well, control V, I'm going to copy that. We call this icon. It's not going to be text. It's going to be an image. And then we're going to use the ID, but we can't just give them the ID. We actually have to get a face, right? So let's go ahead, make a function called get face. I'm going to pass the ID in, and then we're going to return the uh, the image URI to that. So let's do that. Let's do a local function get face, and then we're going to have our ID. And then what do we do? We're going to get a thumbnail type. I'm going to call this TT for thumbnail type. We have a few options available. Enum is Roblox's big collection of uh, constants and thumbnail type is one of them so just remember that enum it's like got a lot of good stuff in it and then we'll do a headshot those are our different types we've got headshot avatar things like that you can explore that and then we'll have a thumbnail size that's also in the enum thumbnail size and we can do 100 by 100 these are in pixels we don't need it to be that uh, that big because we're going to squish it down into our little icon anyway. And then we're going to have uh, a URI. URI is a universal resource indicator. Um, and then we're going to have a flag like is ready that we're not going to check because I like to live dangerously. We'll do game players colon get user thumbnail async. Asynchronous is an asynchronous call. Uh, we were not going to wait for a response. That's why we have the is ready, but it, I'm sure it'll work out. So we're going to pass in our ID. That's our user ID that we passed in from this data down here. It's going to come up here. It's going to go right here. And then we also need our thumbnail type and our thumbnail size. Just return our URI. Voila. It's going to go, that URI is going to be returned. It's going to go into that image. I think we are done. Let's try it out. Boom, ha, look at that, that's pretty cool. And you can clear that up, like I might not want those lines there, because especially when you see it chopping, you might want to change the text sizes and the colors, but up and running, pretty good. Now, if you do the test server and you have your little player one, player two, you're not gonna see an image there. Also, sometimes people's images get messed up when they're over on the Roblox side, so it won't display, it'll be blank. So if yours is, it might be on a Roblox, it might be a Roblox thing. Anyway, 
that's pretty cool. Um, I will see you in the next video and good luck with that one.